trying out this new uh, waiting for guests. You know, you can add people to come in and talk with you today. Um, just trying something new out. But definitely I'm hoping that you will be able to join me today as we talk about the fifth point of the star, which is going to be elective. So come on in. I hope that you're doing well today. So I'm looking forward to having a great conversation with you today. And we're going to get this in. So uh, hope everybody's doing well and that you can kind of catch me live right now if that is possible. So today we're going to talk about, once again, elective, the fifth point of the star. I think that is something that is rarely talked about when we get into the order of the eastern star. Greetings, greetings, uh, Brother Williams, how you doing? So as I said today, we're going to be talking about the fifth point of the star, and that is going to be Electa. The fifth point. Who is she? Electa. Who is this woman they call Electa? Well, I would tell you she was a mother. A mother. Just think about being a mother. For you sisters uh, who, who, who is here, greetings, greetings, Copeland, what's going on with you? Greetings, everybody who's popping in. I want to say thank you for tuning in. Today, once again, we're talking about Electa, the fifth point of the star, the day being the fifth day in the week. I found it appropriate to talk about her, her color, which is red. We're going to get into that a little bit today, so come on and get this in right now. Please hit the like button. I certainly will appreciate it. And today, we're going to talk about Electa. Who is she? That mother. I mean, you sisters of the order, you brothers of the, uh, uh, of the craft. Let Esther, uh, Esther, Electa, Martha, this lady, Electa, though, this lady, the mother degree, the fifth degree on the point, she was all of that. I mean, what's going on? What's going on, Maxine? Tell her what's happening. The fifth point of the star, she was all of that. This lady here, you know, her lessons of charity, her lesson of hospitality, you know, this is who this mother was. You know, when I think of, when I think of elective, I could think of my own mother, my own wife, my own daughter. When I think of elective, the mother, her charity, her hospitality, how she interacted, how she was one who, who, who really stood for something, her strength, her vitality, who she was as a woman. She didn't back down for anything. And as a matter of fact, her faith made her even stronger. She understood. She understood the hazardness that she faced because she didn't back down. She was that type of woman. That's who she was. See, when most people look at the Order of the Eastern Star and they begin to dissect the five points and, and, uh, and, and, and who they were and who they are in, in, in our today's life, the mother. All men, all kinds, all kinsmen come from a woman. Hear me clearly. All kinsmen, all men, all comes from a woman. Look at her. Let's look at the mother and, and, and what she's willing to do for her child, for her community. She's willing to lay it down. A mother is willing to lay it down, whether you right or wrong. A mother is willing to lay it down. Come on, somebody talk back to me. If, if you know anything about a mother, no matter what a child has done, she's going to be right there in the mix of it. She's going to be right there. See, a mother is like nobody else. And let me tell you, Elector was like no one else else. This is why that fifth point is named the mother degree. Because she had that it thing. See, she was, she, was, she was willing to sacrifice her life no matter what. She was willing to give all she had no matter what. Her charity, her hospitality, it all went into who she was. It all goes into her mother, who a mother is. See, a mother too. You, you know what? Here's what gets me a lot of times. Whenever you want to have a fight, especially within the, in the, in the black community, you talk about somebody's mom. <clears throat> talk about their mom and see what happens. I mean, you could talk about their daddy. You could talk about anybody. But the mother, you talk about the mom, 
it's on. Be her dead or her alive. You talk about somebody's mama, we're going to have a conversation. We're going to have a conversation. And, 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 and somebody just posted, she's the closest thing to God. And, and let me tell you just how smooth it is. Every man, every man, true man, spent all his days of his life trying to go back to the place from which he comes. Am I lying? Somebody to talk back to me. Every man, every true man, spends every day of his life trying to go back to the place from which he comes. There is no place like home. I'm just saying. I'm, I'm just saying, but you got to follow me, all right? So, uh, Electa, being who she is, right now I'm saying who she is because she is still living amongst us. See, we see electors every day. We see electors in the mothers, the grandmothers, the aunties, the great aunts, the, the, the adopted mothers, those who have been a mother to you when your own mother wasn't a mother. Those are electors. See, they come and they stand in the gap. Those electors do things for you that nobody else would do. You in need, they'll give you their last. You, the charity, number one. Hospitality. Baby, you hungry? Come on, sit down. Let me give you something to eat. You all right? See, when you find an elector in your life, you rolling. I'm just saying. Elector is that, is, is that person. See, she was able to translate her, her way of life in the face of death. She was able to translate her way of life in the face of death. See, she was that one. She didn't give a hoot. She didn't care. Go read her story about who she is, who she, who, who she was, who she is. Because like I said, we got them around us right now. We have electors around us right now. But we choose not to, uh, 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 we choose not to recognize who they are. We choose that. As men, we do. As women, we do. Because one thing I've learned by watching people, because I, I like watching people, people will teach you a valuable lesson. Is that <clears throat> men, we can put on a suit and we can, compl we can compliment the next man. Hey, man, I like this suit. That's nice. Likes that haircut. That's nice. We can do that. And there's no shame in the game. A woman, a woman, a mother, a daughter, a woman, she can be dressed to the hilt. She can be all of that in the back of potato chips with hot sauce. She can be that. But if something is out of line, greetings, greetings, how you doing, Bobby Jackson? If something is out of line with her, let's say, for instance, her, her, her dress somehow don't fit her quite the way she wanted to fit, but it's banging. Let's say, for instance, her nails ain't, ain't sparkling, but her nails are together. You see, women can always find something about another woman to bring them down, to, to uh, uh, cause them to, to fall short. Instead of taking her sister and lifting her up, saying, damn, she's fine. Damn, she's beautiful. Giving her a hug. Sister, oh, you look great. That's how you do that. See, a mother, a mother can do that. A real mother. A real mother can go to another woman and say, baby, baby, you, you look real great. You look sexy, baby. Baby, you look great. They can compliment you without being uh, offended or not being you know, I, I don't want to talk to her. See, a mother can do that. A real woman who's a mother can do that because they understand. They, are, they already know who they are. See, most women who have not reached that plateau yet of motherhood don't quite get who they are. They don't understand the sacrifices. They don't get it. So if you don't understand the sacrifices, how can you tell someone else how to be a mother? How can you do it? You don't understand the sacrifices that it takes. So when you look at this woman, elect them, when you look at the how she transitioned her life into her faith and didn't back down from no one and understood the hazardness that came along with it in the face of death, in the face of losing everything, she did not give in. She did not wither one way or the other. See, I can say that about my mom. 
You can say that about your mom. You can say that about your daughter who has kids. They ain't go, they going to be right there. So you can say those things. And when you are able to say those things about another woman, that's your elector. Now, with that being said, let's take a look at her color. Elector's color. Her color is red. Today is Friday. The color is red for today. What was so special about that red color? Well, when you look at the red color, which is, uh, I'm going to bring that into line with the chakra. Okay. Energy. Red means energy. Ah, that's what that red means. That lector was full of energy. She was, uh, uh, she was re it, it relates to a tribe. Okay. It relates to a tribe. And we know within the African community, African American community, we say it takes a tribe to raise a tribe. To raise a child. This is this is the commonality that we use sometimes. It takes a tribe to raise a child. And the color of Electa is red. And what that color means is that she relates to the community. She relates to the tribe. And not only that, it resonates in the fact of her strength and her vitality. That's what it relates to. So when you click on this video, that picture that you see, that, that lady that you see, her name is Leela Lewis Day Jones. That is my great, great aunt. My great, great aunt. She was a Eastern star uh, out of uh, Chicago. Uh, I want to, yeah, out of Chicago. I want to say Lily, Lily of the Valley, Lily of the Field, something like that. Uh, when I come back on next time, I'll make sure I have the correct name. But she was a, she was a, she was a member of the Order of the Eastern Star way back when in the, in the, in the 70s. And when I found that out, I continue to find out things about those that are in my family. My grandmother, who was a member of the Eastern Star. Now I'm finding out that my great, great Aunt T is a member of the Order of the Eastern Star, and then her sister was a member of the Order of the Eastern Star. I'm finding these connections, and I'm understanding how these women carried themselves in their life. She was a business owner. Uh, she took care of those who came into a business that couldn't eat. She volunteered her time. See, these are the attributes of a mother. These are the things that we start to gravitate to when we see this in a woman. And a lot of times what we do in our journeys is that we dismiss this. You know, we dismiss it. And this is, this is what I like about the organization or the sisterhood of the Order of the Eastern Stars, where you're able to bring this in. What's up? Greetings, greetings. Writing in clay. All right. Glad to have you on. And this is what I really enjoy about uh, Elector. And what she stood for and what her color means, energy. See, one thing about energy can be killed. Can't kill energy. It only transforms. That's it. it energy would always exist. Electors always exist. Mothers always exist. And you have to understand that. Now, I can go somewhere else deeper into that. What's going on, Virginia? Glad to have you in. I can go on somewhere else with that, but this is not the place for it. But in looking at what Electa has shown us in this brief conversation that we're having, clearly go back as a woman and look at your life and see if you relate to Electa and what her color means, that red, that energy, that vitality, that strength. Go back and check that out for yourself as a member of the Order of the Eastern Star. Go back and check it out. And if you were able to relate to Electa and what she meant to the organization and what she means right now as a mother, you're on the right path. See, there's a lot of electors walking around who are not a member of the Order of the Eastern Star. <clears throat> That's a fact. <laughs> Hear me clearly. There's a lot of electors or electors, the elected ladies, who are walking around who are not members of the Order of the Eastern Star. My God, I'm quite sure you know quite a few of them who have touched your lives, who you willing to go to bat for, who you went over to their home and you didn't have nothing to eat and they fed you. See, those electors are rarely ever talked about. They're rarely ever talked about. We got to talk about those electors in our lives who have paved the way for us to be where we're at. Those who made the sense. When you didn't have a way to school, your 
best friend mother pick you up and took you to school. That's an elector. That's an elected lady. When you didn't when, when you didn't have clothes and you went shopping with her, she bought you something too. That's an elector. That's an elected lady. When, when you needed something to eat, she was right there for you. When you needed somebody to talk to, she was right there for you. That's an elected lady. That's elected. That's who she is. That's how she vibrated. That's, how, that's why her color is red. Her energy is strong. She represented the lion in a woman. Or the lioness in a woman. That's, I'm telling you. When I went and began to indulge in the story of Elector, that fifth point in that color red, man, let me tell you, it was, I was like, yeah, I can rock with that. I see that. I see my mom like that. And knowing that my aunts and my grandmothers was Eastern stars, all of you, I understand now. I understand when they came by the house on Sundays or during the week and they was dressed in white and I didn't quite, this ain't Mother's Day. If you are Baptist in the South and you you understand when I say Mother's Day, you know, the mothers were wore white to church on Sundays and they had the white cloth on their heads. I'm taking you back a little bit. I'm talking about the mothers out of the 70s and 60s when they wore the white uh, cloth over their head. It was Mother's Day, you know, and the mother sit over here and the deacon sit over there. You know, the mothers of the church, you know, them people, you know, the ones that had the little switch switch. You got out of line. They go. Them mothers, you know, them, them electors, see them, you, you, don't, I don't, you don't find too many of them, but they still here. And when you find one, you got to be able to say thank you. You have to be able to say thank you. And why would you say thank you? You would say thank you for the sacrifices that you made for me to be in a position for which I find myself in. See, mothers and fathers make sacrifices all the time. If you got a good mother, a good father. And they have made sacrifices for you to be the best that you can be in life. You owe that to them. You owe that to them. You owe them something. See, I've told my kids all the time. I tell them all the time. You are an investment. You didn't ask to be here. I got it. But damn it, you are an investment. And I want something on return of my investment. Most of you don't require anything of your kids as far as investing is concerned. When I say investing, that means that I want you to have the best life that you can have with my assistance in aiding you. If you just listen to me, I'm not saying you can't make up your own mind or do any of that, but if you just listen to your mother, your father, but today we're talking about the mother's degree, which is the fifth point of the star. If you would just listen to your mother, just take some of the things that she said, it would take you a long way. It'll take you a long way. But most of us feel that we're privileged. You know, we're privileged. You owe that to me. Well, really, they don't owe that to you. They don't. They really, really don't. But mothers make the sacrifice to be there for you when you when you are in need. The mothers make the sacrifice to be there for you when nobody else is going to be there for you. The mothers make the sacrifice to accept your collect call when nobody else would uh, uh, accept your collect call. See, the mother's degree. Elected lady. Oh, she's something special. Oh, yeah, she's something special. And you can't deny that she's not special. She's the it factor. That's why she's the last point on the star. That's why she's so elegant. That's why she teaches the other points how to act, how to carry themselves, how to be. That's why her color is red, full of energy, full of that vitality, full of that strength. That's why she is who she is on the point. It's the last point. It's the last one. You're not going to get another one. You're not going to get another one. And this is what I can say about her. Because all of us have electors in our lives. And all we have to do sometimes is say, thank you. I appreciate you. You know, and then you can see them smile because they understand their sacrifice. This is why her color is red. That chakra. She's grounded. Go, go look at the color red on the chakra chart. It tells you that you're grounded. It tells you about the energy. It tells you that it relates to our tribe. It tells you that, it's, that you're stable. You know, it, it tells you about feeling, uh, 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 feeling grounded in your community. That fifth point on the star, that red color means something. It's just not there because it's pretty and cute. You know, it's not there because it's the lady in red 
Oh, no, 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 sir, no, ma'am. Mm-mm. It's a lot bigger than that. But we tend to forget that. But anyway, look, I want to send a shout out to the brothers uh, out of Virginia. Since he popped up in the chat line, I'll send you a big shout out. I want to send a big shout out to my brothers in North Carolina, Grandmaster Rashid Muhammad. I want to send a big shout out uh, to my brothers in Baltimore, all right? My brothers in Baltimore sending you a big shout out. To those of you who have reached out to me, I want to say thank you. I appreciate your conversations. And, you know, as we continue this journey together, because it is a journey that we continue together, I want to say personally thank you. Greetings. George, what's going on? I appreciate you coming in. Bobby, once again, Sylvester, how you doing? Grandmaster uh, Diaz, how you doing there, Grandmaster Diaz? Grandmaster Diaz, out of Virginia, out of Virginia, huh? out of Virginia, I want to send him a big shout out. I want to say thank him uh, personally from me to him. Uh, he received his uh, Grand Inspector General of the 33rd and last degree of the Ancient Inceptor Scottish Rite in uh, affiliated departments of the Western Masonic Jurisdiction. Uh, he received his 33rd degree about a month ago. I pray that all is well with his family. He moved uh, to Vegas not long ago, so he's doing his thing, making it happen with the brothers in Vegas. So I just want to send him that big shout out and let him know how much I appreciate him. Maxine Teller, how you doing? I want to send you that shout out too. What's up, Brother Walker? How, what's that? Greg Walker, how you doing? I appreciate you. Greetings to everybody tuning in. And I hope and I pray that anytime I come on, that you're able to take something out of the conversation piece. I can't really go into details like I want to a lot of times in regards to degree work. Uh, that's something I do on, on the private Zooms that we have. You know, uh, bite people in and come on and Zoom. We go detail. We go and talk about passwords. What they, we, we go into all of that. And that's, pretty, that's a pretty good conversation. I want to send Brother uh, Sanchez a big shout out. I heard some good things about him. Somebody reached out to me from New Jersey. They said, brother, that brother Sanchez in your lodge, as a matter of fact, he's in, uh, brother Sanchez is in Aries Lodge. He's out of San Diego. You know, they was telling me that brother's on fire, man. He's on TikTok. He got a lot of followers. I'm like, dude, you know, but definitely. So before we go, I want to tell you something about this cup here. I want to tell you something about this cup. You've seen me have this cup before. This is our jurisdictional mug here, you know, and the lesson I've learned in regards to this mug is this. It has a little coffee in it, but it's just like a burden that a person may have in their life. So what you do, you walk around holding this small little burden in your life. You hold it. You just hold it and hold it. And the longer you hold that burden, the longer you take that burden with you, the heavier it gets. Try it. See, we see exactly what I'm saying. You put a little water in this cup and see how long it takes before this cup gets heavy. It's small. It's a very small cup. But the longer you hold it, the heavier it gets. This is why life, you got to let, you got to let some shit go. You got to let it go. Because if you don't, it gets heavy. It weighs you down. And the person that, that, you, that you've had that disagreement with, the person that you don't like, they have moved on with their lives. They don't care. And you still pissed off. You still angry. Let it go. You'll find that your shoulders will be a lot lighter. You still you move a little bit quicker. You think a little bit faster because your mind will be a little bit sharper because you let that BS go. Let it go. I used to always kind of challenge. I used to always like challenge, brother. Ah, ah. No. I've learned once you get to a certain plateau, once you have matured in this thing we call Freemasons and the Order of the Eastern Star, some things you just... You don't, even have to, you don't have to put no energy into it. Like the lady in red, like Elector. I don't have to put my energy into it. I already know. So why even do that to myself? No. Mm -mm. You have to do Teddy Pendergrass. I think I better let it go. <laughs> hey, that's for real talk, real talk. Look, please do me a favor. Hit the like button. Share this. If you think this is some good information, this conversation is great. Share it. I certainly would appreciate it. 
I hope everybody has had a great time, a great conversation with me because I've had one with you. And if you want to join me on this live uh, 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 channel, if you want to join me anytime live, you let me know and I'm, you're welcome to come on. I don't care what jurisdiction you're in. I don't care if you're not a Mason or an Eastern Star, but you just want to know more about it. Come on. Come on, get on, get a, come on, you can have this conversation. You're welcome to come in and have this conversation. This is not one that I'm going to shy away from. I'm not that guy. I believe that uh, the Order of the Eastern Star has a lot to offer a young lady. I really believe that. I believe that because of what I've seen. I believe that because I've been here 35 years in this organization, and I've loved it. I ain't going to ever tell you I ain't had no bad times. I'm not going to ever tell you that I didn't, I didn't like somebody. You, you damn right. There's some people who pissed me off, and I didn't like what they said. I didn't like how they carried themselves. I didn't like it. I didn't. I didn't. But overall, overall, yeah, I'm here. I'm in it because I enjoy it. I enjoy the fellowship. I enjoy the commune. I enjoy the brothers from other countries. I, I enjoy the sisterhood. I enjoy everything that the Order of the Eastern Star and the Freemason has presented to me. I enjoy it. See? And that's why I won't go no place else. And, and, and this is what I want others who come into the organization. I don't care what lodge or chapter you're going to. I want you to enjoy the organization and all that it has to offer. You're going to meet with some craziness. I ain't going to lie to you. You're going to meet with some craziness. But you have to find your space. You have to find your space. And when you find your space, it's a wrap. It's a wrap. So with that being said, hey, remember this. I'm not your study guy, but I am here to help you study. Peace and be well. And uh, whatever you do, stay out the bushes and keep your light on. I'm out. Peace.